Hi, I'm Eitan Medina, Chief Business Officer of Habana Labs, an Intel company. Today, I want to tell you how Habana's Gaudi AI processors are driving large leaps in efficiency in training models. Clearly, there's a large and growing demand for deep learning training. More and more businesses find ways to leverage data they have into their applications by training deep learning models. Models are getting bigger and more complex in the drive to improve their accuracy and usefulness. And training these models is done with many iterations on more and more data. A recent IDC study shown these are done on a weekly basis for most and many are training their models daily or even hourly. All this drives an exponential consumption of compute for AI training and this means increasing cost of operations. This cost has become a real limiter for growth of our industry and also who can afford AI. Today's talk is a lot about cost because cost to train is reported to be the biggest barrier to implementation of AI for businesses. 56% of respondents in an IDC study state that their single most difficult challenge to implementation of AI is cost. So, as an industry, our challenge is how to give more customers access to cost-effective AI training. This is where Gaudi processor comes in, because Habana was founded and Gaudi was developed with the mission to improve efficiency in AI compute. Gaudi was architected from the ground up for AI training efficiency in the cloud and data center. It is based on a heterogeneous compute architecture, featuring a configurable centralized gem engine and eight fully programmable AI customized and optimized tensor processing cores. Gaudi features a software managed memory architecture integrating 32 GB of HBM2 memory, making it easy to migrate models to it for GPU users. And finally, Gaudi is the only AI processor to integrate on-chip 10 100 gigabit Ethernet Rocky to enable high performance and flexible scaling that offers several benefits including lower BOM and freedom from proprietary interconnect schemes. Higher utilization of compute and memory resources drives lower cost in training models. For any new hardware, ease of use is key to adoption. The Synapse AI software is designed to support the developer's journey to minimize the effort in migrating existing models or developing new ones. The software integrates with TensorFlow and PyTorch frameworks and users can find popular reference models at our GitHub. These include image classification, object detection and segmentation, and natural language processing models. Developers will find open documentation, software tools, libraries, and how-to guides to help them getting started with Gaudi. Advanced users who are used to developing custom kernels for their models are fully enabled with all the tools necessary to do that with Gaudi. Now, let's discuss how does Gaudi enable training more and paying less. AWS has recently announced general availability of the new Amazon EC2 DL1 training instances. These are their first non-GPU based training instances and according to AWS, DL1 offers the best price performance for training deep learning models in the AWS cloud. The DL1 instances feature up to 8 Gaudi processors and up to 40% better price performance than the latest GPU based instances from AWS. DL1 users will be enabled with the full suite of Amazon services including ECS and EKS for containerized applications and Kubernetes services and storage services. Users can easily get started using Amazon's deep learning containers, deep learning AMIs, and soon using SageMaker for a fully managed experience. For end users, a big part of the story here is of course the price that Amazon published for DL1. 
the DL1 pricing is 60% lower than the P4D instance that uses the A100 GPUs. What's inside the DL1 instance? AWS custom Xeon scalable processors, 8 Gaudis with 32 GB of high bandwidth memories, 400 gigabit networking, and 4 TB of NVMe storage. Inside the box, the Gaudis are directly interconnected with all-to-all -all 100 gigabit links. These instances would leverage the Synapse AI SDK integrated with TensorFlow and PyTorch and the full suite of Habana's tools and support. Developers can now pick up reference models from our GitHub and immediately implement common use cases, such as image classification, object detection, semantic segmentation, and natural language processing. Let's look at some price performance comparisons using a couple of the most popular benchmarks. We specifically focus on out-of-the-box performance and users will see using popular frameworks and the most recent software available to them. In this chart, we compare training throughput running ResNet 50 using TensorFlow for single and eight accelerators. The GPU numbers are reported by NVIDIA on DGX machines that are similar but not identical to the instances offered by AWS. Later on, I will show also direct measurements Habana did on the actual GPU instances. What you see here is that DL1 training performance lands in between the V100 and A100. With BERT, we see similar behavior where DL1 throughput lands between the V100 and A100. Comparing to both V100 and A100 is important, as we know that both are heavily used. Now, let's see how these translate to end-user cost savings when combining the pricing of DL1 versus the GPU-based instances. If we apply the pricing published by Amazon for these instances on these benchmarks I have just shown, you can quickly see the end-user savings for DL1 users. For ResNet 50, you see 46% better price performance versus the P4D and 61% versus the V100 based instance. In BERT, you see a smaller ratio versus A100, but still a significant benefit. This is how DL1 can help end users train more and pay less. To remove doubts about potential differences between DGX systems and EC2 systems, we did something anyone can do, which is to take the TensorFlow dockers available from NVIDIA's NGC and Habana's and run the models on the AWS GPU-based and Gaudi-based instances to see what training throughput you get. The pricing is taken from the on-demand hourly pricing available at Amazon website. As you can see from this table, we got similar results. The throughput of DL1 lands in between the V100 and A100 based instances, and considering the substantially lower pricing of DL1, you get very significant cost savings, all landing in the pockets of EC2 users who want to train more and pay less. To check for yourself, simply go take the latest TensorFlow Docker containers, spin up an instance, and see what results you get. And we did the same for BERT model with similar results to the previous comparisons. 10% cost savings versus P4D and 54 to 59% versus the P3DN and P3. We used recent TensorFlow Docker containers from NGC and the recommended hyperparameters specified for best results. Of course, Different models will yield different results, but we thought this is a good place to start comparing. You can check out our GitHub for results of some 20 models and check what is applicable for your application. Now, we will not be complete with these price performance comparisons without at least asking how do these correlate with the recent MLPerf benchmark submissions by the different vendors. This slide is a bit loaded, but I put it here as I'm sure that some of you will want to dig in. In the top table, you see MLPerf training time submissions 
by different companies for A100 servers and by Habana for a Gaudi-based server and what software was used for each submission. First, you will notice that these lack apples to apples comparison as there are no submissions for TensorFlow for A100. Secondly, if we ignore this issue and still apply the MLPerf training time across these software framework differences, you see that DL1 achieves 20% cost savings versus A100. DL1 achieves much higher savings, 46%, when comparing throughput using public TensorFlow containers provided by NVIDIA on NGC and Habana. For BERT, the differences between MLPerf submission and what you can get using public TensorFlow software are much bigger, minus 145 versus plus 12, and require deeper dive to understand why. The primary difference is that Habana submitted results that are representative of out-of-the-box performance that customers can get without TensorFlow software today. As a consequence, customers will find it easy to make adjustments to the model and get similar performance. For their MLPerf submission, NVIDIA utilized a series of optimizations that are not available in the release software today or easily consumable for general use. For example, they fuse the entire multi-headed attention block into a single kernel. If a customer wishes to use different attention for long sequences, they would have to change the kernel or incur a performance drop. NVIDIA also used custom data loading techniques that are not available in their standard software distributions. All this is completely within MLPerf rules, but not necessarily usable for all customers. Having said all that, Habana supports MLPerf and we do plan to submit software optimizations for BERT in the next submission round that will show significant performance improvement for this benchmark. We spoke about the motivation to use Gaudi, train more and pay less. But what most of our engineers are really focused on is lowering the barriers to adoption and making it as easy as possible for you to use Gaudi in building new models and migrating models you run today on GPUs. Take a look at our developer.habana.ai site and our GitHub and check out the documentation, the software, the tools, the reference models and how-to content. It is all open and we are eager to interact with the community directly to get your feedback and improve. Our developer page is where you start learning about Gaudi. You will find there the resources to get started on a Gaudi-based server with the software, tools, libraries and models and the how-to guides to get started. We expect GitHub to be the primary window users will go to for models, scripts, setup and installations, as well as communicate with us. Our profiling tools enable users to visualize and analyze the performance they're getting. These are the same tools we used in developing the kernel library, which users can augment with their own kernels. Now, let's hear from Maxime Bergeron, Risk Fuel's director of R&D, what was their experience using Gaudi for financial modeling? Hi, I'm Maxime Bergeron, director of research and development at RiskFuel. RiskFuel serves the corporate financial trading market, providing real-time valuations and risk sensitivities throughout the trading day, so our customers can dynamically assess portfolio value and risk as the market fluctuates. We use cutting-edge AI models trained on synthetic datasets to deliver these trading advantages in all market conditions. RiskFuel solution depend on high-performance, reliable training of deep neural networks on millions of data points and require massive amounts of compute capability. Because this training is mission critical for us, we worked with AWS and Habana to learn how applying the Amazon EC2 DL1 instances based on Gaudi accelerators to create our DNNs can benefit RiskFuel. 
The price performance Gaudi based DL1 training instances deliver means we can train more while lowering operational costs associated with AI computation. Access to more affordable training, in turn, will help us increase model accuracy. We think spending less while training more is a big win for us. And with the resource demands of building and migrating models, we appreciate the ease of use. It's surprisingly simple to get up and running on the new instance with a TensorFlow model by just adding in a few lines of code. And practically speaking, Habana Synapse AI Profiler makes visualizing bottlenecks really straightforward with a GUI that helps us understand what's actually happening in our code. It can provide insight on how we might refactor architectures to make the most of these new processors. Our experiences with Gaudi and DL1 give us confidence that we will be able to lower our training costs while improving model quality and translate these advantages into even more powerful tools for our end users. Here are some quotes from companies talking about Gaudi and DL1, how it fits their business needs for training and the user experience in migrating their models to Gaudi. We know there is a lot to do in expanding our software, our operators coverage, our reference models and ecosystem, but we believe we have a good starting point today for many customers to see immediate benefits in using Gaudi now. To experience the DL1, please go to EC2 and get started with DL1. Gaudi is also available for on-prem deployments. San Diego Supercomputing Center announced recently the Voyager supercomputer that will go into service this fall. This supercomputer would use Gaudi-based servers from Supermicro and leverage the native integration of Rocky that Gaudi offers. Every server connects with 24 ports of 100 gigabit Ethernet running Rocky to a dedicated data switch offering low-cost and high-performance interconnect for scaling. For deploying on-prem, please contact Supermicro directly for availability and pricing. This server integrated third-gen Xeon scalable processors with eight Gaudis and exposes the Gaudis Rocky ports for scaling out and building racks and clusters for AI training. What is next from Habana? We have lots of work to do in expanding our software. And in parallel, Habana is working on our next generation Gaudi 2 AI processor, which takes the Gaudi architecture from 60 nanometer to 7 nanometer, further improving the price performance for the benefit of our end customers. Gaudi 2 maintains the same architecture and leverages the Synapse AI software and ecosystem we are building with Gaudi. But today, the Habana team has the satisfaction of bringing to AI the most cost-effective training in the AWS cloud with the Gaudi-based Amazon EC2 DL1 instances. Thank you.